presence of God in the house tonight. Yes. Amen. You get to thinking about that mansion on the other side? Yes. Glory to God. It, it's wonderful, isn't it? Yes, it is. Praise the Lord. Uh, this is our second lesson coming up tonight on the New World Order. And in our last lesson, we talked about the mystery of iniquity. And which the mystery of iniquity is simply a secretive evil agenda that is designed to move out of the way the divine established order that God put in this world and replace it with a, an evil, lawless order. And we're seeing that in our right before our very eyes we're seeing this transformation every institution in our society is being redefined and reworked and transformed everything is getting a new definition a new purpose and we talked about that last week but uh, I want to talk tonight about the root of evil I want to identify tonight how this mystery of evil or this hidden, unobserved, unseen by natural eye agenda is working in our world and give an illustration of how it's working. Now, in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 15, the scripture talks about a root of bitterness. And in general, a root is the cause, the origin, or it is the source of something. If you see anything growing out there, a tree, a shrub, a flower, plant, crops in the field, you can be assured of one thing. There is a root that is unseen that is feeding whatever is visible and able to be seen and identified and observed. There is a root. It's unseen. You don't know that it's there until it pops something up, a shoot of some type. But everything in this world has a root. Everything in this world has a cause. Things don't just happen. There is a root cause for everything in this world. There is an origin. There's a place where things begin. Things just don't pop up. But there's a place where things begin and something causes that beginning. Some source gives life to whatever is going on in our world. And the Bible calls this a root or a source or a origin of evil or bitterness. And that word bitterness comes from the Greek word pikria, which means extremely bitter and poisonous. It has the power to kill. It has the power to contaminate. It has the power to destroy. And this is what Scripture is talking about. And in the case you were looking at tonight, this root of bitterness is the cause. It is the origin. It is the source of all evil that operates in our world today. Now, the Bible plainly spells this out. The Bible has so many scriptures, prophetic scriptures, that have forewarned and foretold of what's going to happen. We have watched over the last hundred years especially one fulfillment of scripture behind the other. And when it first began, people would, you know, kind of get to thinking maybe we need to straighten our life up, get right with God. And now, you know, people in church have learned to yawn to the coming of Jesus' message as much as they did anything else. Amen. And the Bible plainly tells us what's coming. 
It's no secret to those who are spiritual minded and those who have looked into the Word of God and said, God, I want to see and I want to know. People think we've got a political problem in our country and in our world. People think if we could just get the right leaders in position all over this planet, if we could just get the right senators, the right Congress, if we could just get the right president, people think that we've got a social problem. And, you know, we're spending trillions of dollars every year trying to work with people on a social level, trying to teach men not to beat their wives, trying to teach mothers not to uh, beat their children and, and uh, murder their children. And, you know, we've got women that have put their kids in a van and pushed it off over into the lake. We've got mothers that have murdered their own children by drowning them in bathtubs. We've got families that are extremely abusive. We've got problems. We've got cultural problems. We, we've got so many people that believe so many different things. We've got a problem in society and our culture. And we spend money on top of money in prison systems, passing more laws. My goodness, we can't even keep up with the laws we got now. You know what we want to do? Let's pass another one. That will cure the problem. Almost any night you turn on your TV and you watch the news, you're going to see where the president or Congress or somebody has passed a new law to address a problem we've got, whether it be political, whether it be religious, whether it be social or cultural. But my friend, we do not have a political problem. We don't have a social problem. We don't have a cultural problem. What we have is we have a spiritual problem. Amen. But the question is, why can't people see this? Why can't people see that the world is so full of evil and that the world is being overtaken by evil and the world, in our world, good is evil spoken of? If Somebody's unloading all their problems on you and their kids are on drugs and in prison and, and uh, you know, they got this going on, the family's broken up and they got all these issues. And you mention to them, what about coming to church? What about turning to Jesus? Oh, no, that's like slapping them in the face. If we were to go up to Congress and give a speech and say if we would turn back to God, a lot of these problems would dissipate. They'd just go away. They'd lock you up. Yeah, yeah. Because Jesus is a curse word to this world. They don't want God. They won't have God. They're not even wanting to hear the name of God. Come on. They'll lock you up and put you in jail. Amen. You have suddenly become a criminal in our justice system. Yep. Why is it that people can't see this? 2 Corinthians chapter 4 tells us exactly why. It says if our gospel be hid, if the truth of God is hid to where people cannot see it, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world, Satan himself, has blinded their minds and blinded their eyes that they cannot see it. So we're dealing with a bunch of blind folk. And the blind folk are who's leading the world. And you know what happens when the blind lead the blind? They fall in the ditch, yeah. Amen. They all fall in the ditch. Yeah. <laughs> in Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 15. It illustrates beautifully this secret evil agenda operating in our world today as a root of bitterness. The scripture says, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, 
lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Sounds simple enough, doesn't it? Praise the Lord. But when you get down and start digging this scripture out, and you start defining what these terms mean, that word diligently means to be aware. It's a warning. Be aware lest anyone in your midst come short of the grace of God or turns away from the grace of God. Be aware in the event that someone in your family, in your tribe, in your government, in your church, turns away from the grace of God. Now, if you turn away from God, what have you turned unto? Let me make this statement. Hear it and hear it well. You are connected to a root of one kind or another. You're either connected to the root of the line of the tribe of Judah. Ooh, hallelujah. Or you're connected to the root of bitterness. Yeah. Amen. People say, well, I don't believe in either one. Mm -hmm. I'm on my own. Mm -hmm. You're lying to yourself. Mm -hmm. That's right. You just told one of the biggest lies you could ever tell. That's the lie Satan told Adam in the garden. He believed it. Yeah. And people are still believing. My friend, there is no middle ground anywhere when this life is over. It's heaven or it's hell. And you go in one place or the other. The Bible only speaks of two gods. Jehovah God and the God of this world. And if you're not serving one, you're serving the other. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. So the scripture is telling us that if someone turns away from God, and they push God aside, that root or that source of extreme evil will sprout forth. And it brings trouble. That word trouble means it crowds in, it pushes in on you. And many be defiled, many are corrupted, many are contaminated with moral and spiritual contamination and corruption. So when someone turns away from God, They're out from under the protection of the blood. They're out from under the protection of the grace of God. And the Bible says that Satan is like a lion roaming about seeking whom he may devour. How many times have you seen stories on TV where they said, you need to stay right here, don't go outside. And some idiot goes outside and gets eaten up by a bear or a lion or something, you know. Don't go over there. Well, they're going to go anyway or bust wide open. And that's what God has said. You turn away from me and you come out from under my protective hand of grace and mercy. Then that lion is out there and he is stalking you and he is going to get you. Now, I found something interesting. If you want to read in your Bibles, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 29. Almost the exact wording of this New Testament scripture. I won't be reading from the King James, it's another version. But it says in verse number 18, Deuteronomy 29 and 18. Beware. And Hebrews 12 and 15 says, Be aware. 
It says, beware. It's a warning. Beware. Lest any among you, a man or a woman or clan or tribe whose heart is turning away from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of other nations. That pretty well reads almost word for word, Hebrews 12 and 15, does it not? Beware. Another warning. There's two warnings. Lest there be among you a root bearing poisonous and bitter fruit. Now what we say the root of bitterness was, that bitterness was poisonous and it was extremely evil. Looking at this scripture, it talks about being aware of two things. Number one, be aware of those people who are not serving God who have turned away from Him. And be aware of a root of bitterness bearing poisonous and bitter fruit. Sinners bearing sinners. Getting more and more evil every generation. Two warnings. Be aware of that spiritual root of evil that you cannot see, but you definitely see the effects of it. Be warned that when people turn away from God and turn to other gods, Satan is going to get in the arrangements and in the works. And it's going to be poisonous, and it's going to be a bitter cup to bear. You can look in the Bible from front cover to the very back cover and you'll find that every time godly people sinned or anybody sinned and people were going away from God it was not a good thing. That's what causes wars and strife. That's what causes all the evil in the world because Satan is working behind the cover. He's working invisible to the eye but his power and influence is there. And he is influencing people to do things that are not of God. That are poisonous to the soul and the spirit of man yes. that will cause people to go to hell and they'll bring forth fruit and that fruit is another generation that will be worse than the first and every generation will bring forth more fruit worse than the first can anybody in this house see that tonight Amen. Yes. Amen. praise God yes I want to look tonight at that root of bitterness. And I want to identify what it is. Back in the spring, I began to clean up a fence line right there at the woods. And I'd been so busy the last five years, I hadn't had time to touch it. Man, it, it just got out of control. I worked for weeks. I thought I was just cleaning out the fence rope. I didn't have a clue that God was getting me prepared for this message tonight. Amen. God uses about everything we do any day of the week to help us to understand things. And I had a vine problem. Man, I tell you, I had vines. They had everything wrapped up. It was killing trees. It was killing everything good that was out there. It was killing the grass. It was shading everything. It was choking everything out. And when I began to deal with that, I, I began to realize that there is a main root, yep. if you can find it. Uh -huh. I was dealing with vines, just little tiny things. And then I found, I, I just started tracing them back, walking through the woods, holding on to the vine and pulling it. And I ran into where it went down in the ground. And I dug down and found out where it went in the ground on the other side, and it was bigger than that. And I traced that one down, and it went down in the ground. And I found where it went in the ground originally, and it was bigger, and I traced it back to the founder root that was probably 25 times bigger than the end down there. And I probably found eight or ten places where it went down in the ground, come back up, rambled all over the woods and the fence, the trees, went down in the ground, formed another root, come back up, and rambled around and went 
in 10 different directions. Somewhere it went down again and come back up. And you can cut them all you want. You can dig them up all you want. But until you get down to that main root, that main source, it'll come right yes, back. It Amen. Amen. Yes, it will. So what is it? What is the main root? You see, what we're doing is we're pointing to this crowd and saying, oh, this, this crowd here and this crowd there. And we got so many different groups that are evil. They're promoting things that are not of God, things that are diametrically opposed to what the Bible teaches. And we're fighting those. We're trying to fight this one, fight that one. All you're doing is trying to snip it. And you know what happens when you snip a vine? That's called pruning it. Jesus said, every branch in me that bears fruit, I will cut it and prune it and trim it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, that's the principle of a vine in a root or a vine that grows from a root. The more we fight the evil in this world, the worse it gets. All we're doing is putting fuel on the fire. The only way that this world will ever turn around is for somebody that knows where that main root is, is to dig it up. And there's not but one that knows where it is, and that's Jesus Christ. And he is coming and he is going to deal with it. He is going to root it out of this earth once and for all. But until that time, we've got to deal with it. So what is the main root problem that's feeding all of these different groups in our world today? And I know I'm going to tote some heat for this, but it's the woke Culture. Does everybody know what the woke culture is? Now, for all you woke folks just disintegrate, let me explain what woke is. If you Google that, you're going to find that it's a term that became popular and was birthed in the early 1960s. And it was related to the civil rights movement. But that's not totally accurate. Dr. King led a movement against injustice. It was peaceable. It was based on scripture. And it was based on prayer. But just like any vine that comes up, it's not going to go out there where there's plenty of room in the air in an open space and grow. It's going to attach itself to a good vine or a good tree. And it's going to start wrapping around it. And you don't think too much about it till after so much time goes by, it's got that thing so wrapped up until it's choking that tree down. You've got a good tree but it's killing it. And that's what has happened in the midst of our civil rights movement. Hey, some folks got in there that didn't need to be in there. They some people that didn't believe in God. There's some people that had reverend in front of their name that in the 50 years I have been observing their life, I've never seen either one of those two reverends offer a prayer. Mm. Come on. Mm. I have never seen either one of those two reverends refer to Jesus Christ or speak his name. I have never heard one of them read a scripture that they didn't twist it and pervert it. And that's where all this radicalization has come from. That's where all this junk has come from. But you see, woke 
became identified as a condition or a culture. Number one, woke means to have your eyes open to where you see what's going on. It means to become aware of your situation. It means to have a call to action. In other words, if somebody decided people don't need to wear green shirts, Their eyes are open and they're watching. Looking at everybody. I, I, if I see a green shirt, I'm going to know about it. I'm going to identify it. And I'm going to rip it off of them. And that's exactly where people are today. You can't do anything without somebody's eyes being on you. Amen. Listen to every word you're saying. And if it's not just politically correct, they want to put a suit against you. They want to see you in jail. Or they want to persecute you. And everybody's pushing their own agenda. People say, well, I've never seen the world like this. This is just going crazy. No, it's not going crazy. It's growing evil. And when I began to read this, the Holy Spirit said, where have you ever seen these three things in this same order before? And it just kind of like, whoa, whoa. And the Holy Spirit directed me over to Genesis to where Adam and Satan were having a conversation. And Satan said, you know, God is not just. He's not treating you right. You're not getting all your due. You're not getting all your rights. There's things you can have that God's holding back from you. You are a victim of injustice. And he began to say, you can be like God. But God says, no, you can't eat of the tree that can give you all of these things he's trying to hold back from you. Boy, Adam gets all fired up. And his eyes became open. And for the first time, he looked at that tree. And he said, it looks with the eyes like a tree that would be desired to make one wise. He became aware that there was something else that God had not told him. That he was not allowed to participate in or partake of. And he's like, well, why not? It's right here in the garden, and God put the garden here, and God put the tree here, but God's telling me I can't have it. What an injustice. I deserve it. Well, I tend to this garden. I made an image and likeness of God. Why can't I be God-like? Why can't I have this? So, his eyes casting on that tree and his eyes being open to what that tree could give him, he became aware of what he could have and that awareness became a call to action. We're going to do something about this. We're going to make a change in this garden. Brother, I'm not going to ignore this tree anymore. I'm wised up to what's going on now, and I'm going to do something about it. And he partook of that tree, and the Bible says immediately his eyes were opened, the first stage of woke. And when his eyes were opened, he became aware that he was naked. 
awareness, the second stage of woke. And when he became aware, he sewed fig leaves together. The call to action, the third stage of woke. So you see, the woke culture that Google says began in the 60s, and I'll tell you, Google don't know everything. The Bible trumps Google any day of the week. Amen. Woke is as old as the Garden of Eden. It's as old as man. It is simply put a rebellion against authority. Now, let me say this. Are there injustices in this world? You better believe it, buddy. Wives shouldn't get beat. Kids should not starve. Families should not divorce. People should not murder one another for money. People should not traffic other humans in sex slave rings and sex crimes. Women should not be sexually abused. Bosses ought not to hold back wages of good workers and nearly starve them to death. One should not enslave another or think they're better than another. Oh, there's injustices in this world that just won't wait. So what is our call to action? Let me ask you this, with all the injustices all over this planet, answer me this question. What if every soul on this planet had their eyes open and they were no longer blinded by the God of this world and they realized that Jesus Christ died for their sins? They became aware there's a heaven and a hell. There's good and evil. They became aware there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. They became aware of their condition before God. And they all run to the churches and repented in the altar. Got good and sanctified. Born again. Filled with the Holy Ghost. What kind of world we live in? Well, number one, you could defund the police then. And it'd be a good thing. You could disband the armies. We wouldn't need a standing army. We wouldn't need all these naval ships. We could close down divorce courts. The lawyers would have to put their hands back in their own pockets because nobody's using them anymore. Our entire justice system and legal system would just shut down. Politicians would go home and get a real job. The doctors could retire. You know, that's exactly what's going to happen when Jesus comes back. Amen. I just described to you exactly what's going to happen when Jesus comes back. Amen. They'll beat their swords into plowshares. You won't need all what we got. How much tax money do you think a government could save if they didn't have to have an army, didn't have to have the military, didn't have to have all these uh, folks, you know, doctors and lawyers and all these folks? How much simpler could this world be if everybody loved their neighbor as their self? If they done unto others as you would have them do unto you? If they simply just followed the Ten Commandments, everybody served the Lord. Children respected and honored their parents. Nobody stole anymore. Nobody coveted anymore. Nobody committed adultery anymore. The perfect solution to every problem 
So what does that tell us? It tells us that woke began in the Garden of Eden with a rebellion against God and is continuing on right to this very day. The same thing happened in the garden. There's the root right there. And every group and every culture that's got their name out there that said, we want this, we want that, we want this, we want that. And let me say again, there are innumerable injustices in this world. But the bottom line is there is a way to address those issues. One of them is God's way. The other one is man's way. And you see this culture, it's not a culture really, it's a condition called sin. And this root of evil that has sprung up in what we identify as a woke condition is like that vine that has sprung up. Let me say this. I talked about that vine, how it goes down and gets another root. That's another group. And that group goes on and after a while there's another group comes up out of that. You know, we'll laugh about this stuff. Back in the, was it 60s? When they had the first march, gay pride march. Everybody laughs, said that'll never go anywhere. <laughs> Back whenever Madeline O'Hare said we're going to take prayer out of schools, I remember one preacher on the radio said that'll never happen in the United States of America. <laughs> Less than a year she had it done. He was telling the folks, don't get alarmed, that'll never happen. This is America. Yeah, it did, didn't it? All the things that we look at today that have replaced godliness and holiness and God's order is being replaced with evil. And everything opposed to God's order is springing up this group, that group. All that vine is doing it. Come off the main branch. It's just gone down, got another root, come up as something else and identifying as something else, something else, something else. And that vine, when it grows up, let me say this. I had a beautiful magnolia tree behind my house, kind of right near the edge of the woods. Beautiful tree, just full of life, vibrant, man. It was just beautiful. And when I got all the vine stripped out of it, I noticed it was almost dead and it hasn't recovered yet. It's a dying tree. You see, the things that are good, when that root of evil starts wrapping around it, it suffocates it, it cuts off, it grows around those leaves, it grows around all of those branches, and it, it just covers it over. You can't even see the tree anymore. Let me ask you a question. Can you see good in this world anymore? Because it's being masked over and covered over by the woke attitude, the sinful condition, that root of bitterness that's operating in our world today and it will kill a good tree. It will kill a good plant. It will kill anything that it wraps around and smothers out. And this is where we are. What the Bible has taught, we are seeing right before our very eyes. We're seeing the tentacles of coming straight out of hell, wrapping itself around the church, wrapping itself around good, godly people, wrapping itself around a good country, a good world, and it's just killing it. It's just wrapping it up and strangling it till all the life is gone out of it and it can't live anymore. And that vine is going to live off of all those dead things. And it'll just keep right on growing. I've got, I got to looking on the other side of my property and there are several trees that are dead because the vines just eat them up and choked them out. They could not get sunlight. They, they could not get anything to live. It's choked them out. And that's just a dead tree standing there. Just a shell of what used to be. It's exactly where our nation is today. It's just a shell of what it used to be. Things that used to be strong and vibrant are covered up with evil and have been taken over and killed and used for that prop on to grow on. If you can't see what I'm talking about, I don't know what it's going to take for us to see it. Can we see any of this? Yes. 
It's right here. It's right here. Next question is what can we do about it? Remember when I was saying what if? Everybody turn back to God? Well, we know that's not going to happen. I mean, can you get church people in church? How are you going to get sinners in the church? But the fact of the matter is, it's going to come to a point. The Father's going to look over to the Son. He's going to say it's time. And Jesus is coming back. And he's going to crush that root. Amen. He's going to uproot it, dig it up. And he's going to burn it and burn everything in this planet out. Where there's no trace whatsoever of that root in this planet. <clears throat> it's going to be a different world, but it's going to take Jesus coming back to do it. And we need to be praying. Lord Jesus, come quickly. And we need to be getting ready to leave this world. From now, when you watch the news, just think about that vine that's wrapping itself around everything that's good. But I'm going to tell you, you need to get your eyes out of that box. We used to have newscasters. Maybe I ought not to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Now we don't have newscasters. People just tell what's going on and what has happened. we got commentators. Yeah, that's right. yeah I, I pronounced it right. They're not commentators. They're commentators. You know what a commentator is? It's a communist that tells you this is what you need to think. This is how you need to view what I'm talking about. This is how you need to respond to this. This is how you need to act. I don't need anybody to tell me how to act. The Bible tells me how to act. That's right. The Bible tells me how to respond to things. And one of those big roots that's growing in this country is a root called communism. And I want to tell you, the roots got so big till you just can't stop it. It's going to take Jesus to stop it. And he is coming soon. Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. And I hope and pray that you'll get something out of this lesson and that it will help you in your walk with Jesus. Amen.